Most people think their metabolism is broken because of hormones, carbs, or calories. But a brand new imaging study found something far more shocking. Researchers were actually measuring metabolic energy inside the brain itself. And it turns out your brain might be running on half the energy it's supposed to have. And it's silently rewiring your hunger, cravings, and insulin levels every single day. And the crazy part, fixing it just only took one simple change and insulin sensitivity improved within hours. But before I get to that one change, let me show you how this shows up in your everyday life, because chances are it's already happening to you right now. You know, that 3 p.m. crash, the brain fog that comes about, the strange hunger that hits even when you've just ate. Most people blame stress, poor sleep, or even not enough coffee. But researchers just measured something almost nobody has ever looked at directly. And it may explain everything you're feeling. Your brain is literally running out of energy. Not metaphorically. Your brain's cellular battery is draining the same way your phone drops to 10%. And when researchers figured this out, how to restore this energy, insulin resistance improved within hours. Think about how often this shows up. You eat a decent meal and an hour later, you're thinking about food again. You wake up tired even after a full night's sleep. You get overwhelmed easily. Your mood dips for no clear reason whatsoever. You struggle to stay focused on simple tasks. These aren't personality flaws. They're symptoms of a brain that doesn't have the energy to run its own systems, let alone regulate the rest of your body's metabolism. It feels personal, but it's biological. This new study published in December, 2025, used a technology that sounds almost impossible. It's called phosphorus magnetic resonance spectroscopy or 31P MRS. It's a specialized brain imaging technique that Let's researchers observe energy metabolism inside living brain tissue in real time. They measure the two primary energy currencies your brain relies on, ATP, which powers every electrical signal and thought, and phosphocreatine, the backup battery that rapidly regenerates ATP when demands spike. Most metabolic research focuses on blood sugar, insulin, or hormones, but None of those systems can function properly if the brain doesn't have the energy to coordinate them. What researchers discovered was unusually clear. They compared normal weighted men to men with obesity. And the more metabolically compromised someone was, the more depleted their brain energy reserves were. Foster creatine levels, the buffer that keeps the brain stable during stress, were chronically lower. That matters because the brain is designed to operate with a large safety margin. It keeps excess energy on standby so it can regulate hunger, control cravings, manage stress, make decisions, and coordinate metabolic signals throughout the body. When that reserve shrinks, every signal becomes harder to regulate. This wasn't just correlation. Lower brain energy strongly predicted worse insulin sensitivity, higher post-meal blood sugar responses, disrupted appetite regulation, and increased calorie intake. In other words, the brain's energy status wasn't a byproduct of metabolic dysfunction. It was helping drive it. This helps explain a long-standing mystery, how two people can eat the same meal and experience completely different metabolic responses. If the brain doesn't have the energy to regulate the pancreas, the liver, and the appetite centers, everything downstream, hunger, glucose control, cravings, insulin demand, starts to unravel. It also explains why metabolic dysfunction feels so mental. It's not just weight gain or fatigue, it's irritability, it's poor focus, it's feeling overwhelmed by simple tasks. It's blaming yourself for lack of discipline when in reality, your brain is operating on depleted energy reserve. So the researchers asked the obvious question, what if we could restore the brain's energy supply? You can't fix this by eating more food, the deficit isn't in your stomach, it's inside your brain cells. You can't exercise your way into higher brain ATP production quickly, and most supplements don't cross the blood-brain barrier efficiently. They needed something the brain actively transports and uses directly for mitochondrial energy production. And surprisingly, they found something that worked. It was vitamin C. And this has nothing to do with immune support. Vitamin C is required for mitochondrial function and redux balance. Your brain concentrates vitamin C at levels up to 100 times higher than your bloodstream because it relies on it to maintain stable ATP production. 
Here's the twist. Many people, especially those with metabolic dysfunction, are chronically low in vitamin C without realizing it. Obesity increases oxidative stress, which burns through vitamin C faster. It may impair absorption. It even blunts the normal post-meal rise in vitamin C levels. The people who needed it most often have the lowest reserves. To test whether restoring vitamin C could improve brain energy, the researchers used a intranasal vitamin C spray, 80 milligrams per day for 80 days, allowing rapid entry into circulation and bypassing digestive limitation. The results were immediate. On the very first day, insulin sensitivity improved. The body required less insulin to manage the same glucose load. That was on the first day. That's metabolic rewiring happening in real time. Over eight days, vitamin C levels normalized, phosphocreatine levels stabilized, and the impaired vitamin C response to meals was restored. The brain's metabolic rhythm came back online. But here's the frustrating part. You can't buy the nasal spray. It was custom formulated for the study. But here's the important detail. The benefits weren't tied to nasal route itself. Improvements in the brain energy correlated directly with serum vitamin C levels, not delivery method. That opens the door to something far more accessible. Oral vitamin C has excellent absorption at lower doses, roughly 90% at 200 milligrams or less. At very high doses, absorption drops pretty sharply, which is why mega dosing doesn't make any sense. The intranasal dose used in the study likely produced serum levels similar to 200 to 500 milligrams per day taken orally and then split into two doses. That range maintains steady blood flow levels and compensates for increased vitamin C turnover that we've seen in metabolic dysfunction. While we don't yet have a direct oral versus nasal comparisons, mechanistically and based on serum correlations, similar neuroenergetic effects are plausible. Now, zooming out for a second, this study challenges how we think about metabolic health. For decades, we've treated metabolic dysfunction like a plumbing problem, like calories in, calories out, insulin high or insulin low. But this research suggests the issue may be electrical. If the brain's energy circuitry is unstable, it can't regulate hunger, glucose, or insulin efficiently. A low brain energy becomes reactive instead of predictive. That shows up in cravings, fatigue, overeating, mood swings, poor stress, tolerance, and even hunger that doesn't make sense after you've just ate a big meal. If the brain can't power metabolism, Metabolism becomes chaotic no matter what diet you follow. The broader implication is important. If these findings hold up in larger trials, part of the metabolic dysfunction may be a neuroenergetic deficiency, not a willpower problem, not a discipline flaw, and not just a calorie issue. This framework explains why some people struggle despite doing everything right. The problem isn't effort, it's energy. We do need to stay grounded though. This was a small study, 30 men over eight days, oral vitamin C wasn't directly tested. Long-term outcomes like HbA1c or body composition weren't measured. Appetite didn't change. This is early evidence, not a treatment protocol, but it's strong enough to shift how we think about metabolic health and all that's involved. So what can we do now? Food should always come first, citrus fruits, berries, bell peppers, broccoli, leafy greens. But if you're dealing with metabolic issues, brain fog, unexplained hunger, or energy crashes, supplementing with vitamin C around 200 to 500 milligrams a day, split into two doses, is reasonable. It's a low risk option. It's inexpensive, water soluble. And based on this research, it may support the system that ultimately determines how your metabolism behaves or your brain's energy. The link to the full study is below for anybody that wants to look at it. Let me know in the comments if you've noticed changes in energy cravings or glucose control when supplementing with vitamin C. And if you want more research on neuroenergetics, metabolism, or brain-driven metabolic health, let me know. This is Dave. Thanks for watching.